to see you then. Thanks. Bye. I'm just going to let all the live stream services catch up because while some of them start streaming some straight away, some of them seem to take a little while to connect to my streaming service. Hello, my name is Laurel Papworth and if you're following me on YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, then you should be seeing this live. I went live a couple of minutes ago to test things because didn't work so well on Monday and um, looks like we're all good to go. So if you have any questions about the lecture, please ask me in the comments. I've got an aggregator and I pull all the comments into one place. And uh, today's lecture is on social media for universities, colleges and higher education. And it's focusing on content calendars, electronic programming guides and scheduling tools. So see you in a sec. And it all looks good to go. All right, so what we're going to start with, I think, today, uh, let's go into presentation mode. Yeah, that'll do. So I need to talk about the strategy for um, content calendars. The universities and colleges that I work with We've already done the previous part of the lecture series. If you haven't seen those, there's a YouTube playlist and there's a Facebook series season thing. And I've tried to group them as well as I can. But uh, we've done the strategy, social media strategy, and we've done target audiences. I think we've done um, a couple of other things, toolbox one and like what tools to use and things like that. Today, we're focusing primarily on content and we're going to map it to our strategy. So... The first thing I want to talk about is student acquisition, which tends to be where most social media managers come in from with universities is acquiring students. And maybe the second one is retaining students or getting them through some of those problematic periods where they may leave or or unenroll. Um, and some of the content will be user generated content. So peer to peer tours where Students are taking tours of the university and sharing them. And I've worked on campaigns uh, in the Middle East and in South Asia, where by having current students create the tours in the local language and then delivering those into the those areas, friends and family and friends of friends, things like that, connected to the social campaigns. So it's, it's all pretty standard stuff these days, I would say. Um, I was pretty new maybe 10, 15 years ago, not so much now. Highlighting values, so diversity, inclusivity, uh, anything that may help um, a student choose your university over another, which is not purely end result. Um, purpose driven but values driven so purpose for going to university is to get a degree to get a uh, a better job please the family <laughs> you know but basically to to education today tends to focus on job prospects so that's the purpose and then the values are well I like creativity around me or I want to be in a very conservative campus a very liberal political activist campus or they, they're values driven so other things that are important I'll show you examples of these at the moment we're just doing a very quick highlight I can't do in an hour what a full strategy would take but that's okay uh, rites of passage um, if you're looking at social media as community building as social psychology and anthropologically sound practices I guess then rites of passage and rituals and, you know, the meme type things are important. Not just graduation, but here in Australia we have O Week, Orientation Week, and that's where most students get introduced to the bar and the bands. <laughs> but that idea that you um, these are going to dovetail into your uh, EPG, your programming guide, your scheduling. Exam week, you know, all that kind of thing. Wins and losses, 
So making sure there's a balance between our football team won the inter-university competition or tennis or table tennis or whatever it is versus uh, making sure you're monitoring tools, which is what last week's lecture func functionally was about setting up um, those sort of tools. So keeping an eye on crisis comms, like I noticed at the moment, there's quite a lot going on in the newspapers and other media about um, the Me Too movement, about rape allegations, around a whole lot of things. So developing this is, is critical. And if, if you're watching at a different time or from a different place, it's the first week of March 2021, hopefully coming to the end of the COVID period, the COVID era in Australia. And news has been breaking about a current minister who was part of a university debating team who allegedly was raping or had raped a woman while on the university debating team. The kind of blowback that will happen first at his alma mater and then secondly across universities as being a place where women are not safe and then all the, the sort of the ripple effect that happens, the amplification effect that happens through social and heritage media bears watching at the moment. So I'm just giving you an idea of what kind of things go on every week. Um, sharing cross audience, knowing what to share and to which audience. And I'll show you examples of where the channel has muddied the waters by having so much different content for so many different audiences. So our content strategy really has to be the right content to the right audience at the right time. Um, hashtag communities. Why did I write that? Oh, obvious. <laughs> communities of interest, COIs, are what hashtags are. So people think hashtag is a way of searching for content. They think it's topic-based threaded discussions. They think they're a waste of time. They think a lot of things about hashtags. But for me, it's about a community of interest. So hashtag engineering people that are involved in the engineering industry. Hashtag Griffith Uni, and I'm only choosing that one because I'm showing one of their press room things. Um, things, technical term. <laughs> is um, So a hashtag for Griffith Uni would, would be a community of interest around Griffith Uni. It could be potential students, it could be current students, it could be alumni, it could be lecturers, it could be parents of students, it could be staff, it could be vendors, all sorts of people are in a hashtag community. So they're threaded around interest. Alumni news is another part of the content calendar. And remember, alumni are quite different. They're the future self of the current student. Or the current student is the past self of of alumni and quite different psychographically. If if you're unclear on psychographics, it's probably worth looking at the first video in this series on strategies, or I think we have one coming up on target audiences. Um, but the algorithm will not deliver a piece of content to both current students and past students because of the psychographic differences. So a current student is involved, their keywords, their tagging, their uh, the semantic engine, the artificial engine behind the algorithms has tagged current students as talking about students, student loans, uni, lectures, exams, textbooks, and the keywords and the lifestyle is very different than alumni who's probably talking about mortgage and marriage and kids and job. Uh, issues, different focus, past self, future self. So just kind of be aware that, you know, where am I? Bottom left. There we go. Um, alumni news. Next one. The press room or the newsroom and the target audience there is clearly journalists, magazine editors, or even on-campus magazine. Um, on-campus newspaper editors. What was my old newspaper called at the University of Adelaide? I think it was On D or Bread and Circuses, something like that, one of those. And then the vice-chancellor has a role as for leadership, 
So he's not going to be talking about what band is on at the bar this week. <laughs> and uh, is going to be a bridge, yes, to students, but also a, bre a bre bridge into the wider community. Very naughty. On our O week, a first prize for doing all the exercises around campus, so gamifying, getting to know the campus. A first prize was a dinner with the VC, Vice Chancellor, and second prize was two dinners with the Vice Chancellor. Don't tell your Vice Chancellor that. It's very naughty of them. And I think that was it. Yes. Okay. So, what does this look like? Um, let's have a look at a few examples. I think I should be up in the top right corner. What do you think? Don't forget, if you've got a question, please ask me. Not 100% sure all the platforms are, bring, are coming into my aggregator, but it is the best that I can do without flipping between lots and lots of tabs looking for questions all the time. But um, this is the... I've got a Twitter list, special list on Twitter called... Vice Chancellor, and I just put all the Vice Chancellors in there. I showed you that last week. Um, but I can see here that the Griffith University Vice Chancellor has put up a photo welcoming the income Japanese ambassador, incoming, I guess, to the Nathan campus. So it's kind of interesting. Is it? Who's it for? Always think, right content, right audience at the right time. So this was put up at 11 a.m. Wednesday morning. Who is the audience for this? And um, inspiring speech and a brilliant song from K. Miller Heid uh, Kate um, Miller Heidke, popular singer, I believe. I only know that from hanging around on online communities that involve people who don't listen to classical music and jazz, which is, tends to be what I like. <laughs> uh, so we have what a way to finish the fe February graduation. So that goes to that uh, building out your content calendar with rituals and things like that. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. So that's Twitter. If I go to Harvard on Instagram, we've got a range of things from a tree on campus, it's probably a well-known tree, I don't know, to um, 14,000 likes for the trees, 36,000 likes for this young man. Harvard lightweight crew team. He needed to pass a swimming test, but he didn't know how to swim. COVID restrictions. They helped him swim. And now, this is a deflection piece of content. And deflection is where it looks like it's about one thing, but it's actually into something else. So it looks like that it's about sports and winning in spite of sports and things like that. But it's also about values if I come to this university, they will help me win with this or they will help me um, get ahead or something like that. So I always think of values as like the hidden marketing agenda, the one that's maybe not clear. Well, not immediately clear. Let's move on because I'm only showing you examples and then we're going to look at tools. It's 1.15 already, 50 minute lecture. Oops. If you haven't met me before, my name's Laurel Papworth. I do social media lectures at universities and conferences and in-house for corporate clients and mostly a lot with government. And I practice on you guys on Mondays with Social Media News at 10.45 a.m. Mondays, Sydney time. And Social Media Lectures and the current series is on higher ed and social media at 1 p.m. on Thursday. And I'm doing it to keep myself up to date with lectures that I haven't given for a year or more now and to practice the tech because delivering online lectures is a dark art which I am yet to master but determined to do so and that was just a little segue there you go and let's get back to this all right I'm going to be in the top left I think yeah I don't need to see the Facebook logo 
Now, this is an example, and no shade at, at TAFE about this. I, I just want to point out that this is an example of lots of different content to lots of different audiences, and then the algorithm gets confused, and it sees who's responding, and it's all over the place, and it can't build a what's called um, in the algorithm a lookalike audience. And so it, be, it can become problematic for universities that have lots of audiences, lots of topics, lots of just interest, I guess. So this is a history piece, kind of like a throwback Thursday. Oh yeah, TBT, of course it is. Let me make that larger. I'm, some of you will be watching this on a mobile phone and straining your little eyes. We don't want that, do we? Um, so this is an alum, uh, no, it's not alumni. She is alumni, but it's staffing news and it's about interior decoration again. Lovely, sweet smile. <laughs> and then we have a future career in aviation using hashtags for aviation. Notice that there's no attempt to target the audiences here. So you don't have to pay for ads to use targeting. You can just do it in Creator Studio. And then that way you can make sure that potential students interested in these type of topics would see this. I'm not convinced that people that are interested in interior design are the same people that are interested in aviation, I guess is what I'm saying. And so the algorithm is starting to get confused. Who, who is each post for? And then we have a ritual, which is World Hearing Day, and I'm seeing a lot of this on LinkedIn as well. And this would be supporting diversity, ability, disability, I don't know, a free online course for primary healthcare professionals. Use your hashtags. I'm really pleased, Hay, for doing that because. Facebook has said that the algorithm pays attention to hashtags. Don't listen to what other people say. I don't care if they're the only one using the hashtag. If the algorithms, that one thing that's listening, use them. All right. So this example from Twitter, a Twitter list of vice chancellors and what vice chancellors are speaking about and lots of handshaky photos. Um, there's... Harvard showing its uh, values-based stuff to, to students, potential students on Instagram, and then TAFE that are using their Facebook page for all kinds of things, for all kinds of audiences. So let's move on. The first thing that you want to do with your calendar is you want to split it up into these different groups. I'll read them quickly. I know I don't like doing this in lectures with you know, death by PowerPoint presentations, but I know that some of you can't read this. So first of all, content calendar. And that's where you create a series of, and their how-tos, their articles. If you were to pick up the magazine, it's not the ad, it's the actual articles themselves. So think of your social media channel as a magazine. Be the magazine, not the ad. Be the article, not the ad. And it's just to build awareness and for marketing, not sales, not conversion. Your promotions pal uh, pl planner is your Facebook ad, your Instagram competition, download an ebook, sign up for email newsletters or whatever. And it's a call to action and it's a promotion because it's, you know, it's an ask. So lots of lovely articles in your content calendar about wonderful things that students are doing and alumni are doing and interviews and things like that. So it's a magazine and then throw in the, we have an open day or sign up for our email newsletter or download our application for blah, blah, form, sheet. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Engagement calendar is where you specifically are not posting an in-depth article. You're putting something up to get engagement. And Facebook recently, uh, as recently as yesterday, I've been seeing this, they've been flashing up warnings which say, if you ask a question, we will show it to more people. <laughs> and I can't think of a plainer way for the algorithm to tell you that questions that get answers will be delivered 
into more news feeds than broadcasting out a non-engagement style post. So if it's a the vice chancellor would like to announce that, that's going to go to less people than a, hey, we're thinking of changing the regulations, the rules, whatever on XYZ. What do you guys think of this? Pure engagement post, not even any background to it, just bang, straight out. Although it is nice if you do content, content, engagement. You get the idea. So an engagement planner would include reward and recognizing people who have been contributing content to to you and about, you know, on your hashtags or whatever it is you've been doing. You say thank you to them, you reward and recognize them, gamify it a little bit. Colleges and higher ed know all about gamification, <laughs> um, all those leaderboards. Uh, sharing content from joint venture partners or from just organizations that are aligned with yours. And yes, I know that the bar page is the most popular, but that shouldn't be the only one that you share. Although, of course, the the SMO, the social media optimization juice you get from sharing things that are popular is much higher than sharing things that are boring. Don't share boring things. Find that middle ground. Right audience, right content, right time. <laughs> What else do we have engagement calendar? We have uh, Fan Photo Friday, Throwback Thursday. We just saw, who was it? It was TAFE had done a Throwback Thursday, I think it was, wasn't it? Oh, where are we? At the top, wasn't it? There we go. Throwback Thursday and International Women's Day 2021. So they're using two rituals in the calendar. Um and hoping to get engagement from that. So a comment calendar, that can be like your AMA, your Ask Me Anything, your town hall. Hey, we do a live stream every Monday. Come and talk to the vice chancellor. Come and talk to the head of the department. Come and talk to other students where you have Zooms or public live streams or whatever it is you want to do. I've been working with schools recently on um, Zooming so you can ask questions of other students, peer-to-peer -peer engagement. Oh, I need to move on. Influencer planner, a featured contributor. Oh, that's so much better. Why didn't I do that? Oh, man. See, this is what I learn when I'm doing these streams, not to be an idiot. It's a long process. <laughs> um, influencer planner, Featured contributor, design or PR team. So you, you in universities, you tend to call them ambassadors or um, at schools, it's sort of whoever you, you put in a, in a leadership content creation role. So if you know that someone's a top Instagrammer, who had a lead? Oh, I know. Um, was it TAFE had the singer? No, it wasn't. It was Twitter. So Kate Miller Heidke has 40,000 followers and has an album out. And so she's a key influencer. And presumably the 40,000 followers are her age or kind of similar. And so therefore the idea that she went to Griffith University suddenly becomes extremely attractive to her loyal fans. That's not the only kind of influencer relationship out there. We've got, we're going to do a whole session on influencers. You know, the vice chancellor's an influencer, the, the key centers of influencers, but that general idea. The, uh, what else? Yeah, sharing and tagging stuff from influencers. So if she had put up something about Griffith University, then we sharing that one on. You don't necessarily know what they are ahead of time when you're putting your planner together. You just make a note that on Wednesdays it's going to be handed over to other people. Like educate, are you, um, it's going to be handed over to engagement and influencers, not me, me, me media, not our content, but their content. And we're gonna we're gonna do shareability, discover, dis distribute, discuss that kind of thing. So the Memory planner is actually more looking back. What did we do 
last exam week? What did we do last semester? What did we do last International Women's Day? What did we do last hearing day? What worked? What didn't? And being able to have access to those things to improve outcomes. And then your planner are the things that impact campus. Like, for instance, I know I can't put my um, lecturer invoices in after December the 17th because the campus is pretty well closed up and I won't get paid till January. So there's a mad scramble on about the 15th or 16th to get all my invoices in. That's just a little peek behind the curtain. But that idea that... Um, campus closes down or certain services aren't available also remembering oh that building is going to be closed for renovations so we can't do our Instagram photos we had planned in their foyer because it's going to be full of building crap and you'd be amazed at how often those things go out of your head if you don't put them in the calendar so anyway um, what the next thing to do is to take each of those things and then color code them and we've discovered this. I don't usually use files in browsers. I normally bring up, I'm not making excuse, oh, I am making excuse, but when I'm doing live lectures, I normally have them in a folder and I just bring them up and they're already fully expanded. So it's good to know that I can bring them up in a browser, bookmark them in the browser, load them when I need them, and we're good to go. And then I can click on them and expand them. But anyway, color code, color code, color code, color code. Now, the reason why you're color coding is because you want your um, diary, your initial pass through of this stuff to look like this. So I have, if you think about each one of these. Can you see clearly? Yeah, you can. I have the analytics calendar. So the green one is I need to download the all of the analytics and then I need to submit the report. So I've got a day to write my report. So that's in there. So everybody gets used to, they get programmed internally that they'll have the report by lunchtime or 3 p.m. Tuesdays or whenever it is. I don't do them on Fridays. There's a lot going on on Fridays on social media particularly with universities, it's either the quietest day or absolutely the busiest day, especially if everybody has set Friday afternoon as being when essays have to be in or whatever. The system's not working. I can't log in. And I know that it's an IT issue, but I'm just saying there's a lot of this stuff that comes through social media. So we've got an analytics calendar, calendar that needs to be done. And analyzed and not only the numbers but we need to extrapolate our actions the content calendar so for instance on Monday we might put up a job of the week I wonder if I can make this one any bigger I think we lose days if we do hmm. what if I bring that over there and then expand that how's that Just excuse me while I pat myself on the back no, that won't work. I need to read. Oh, yeah, I suppose it will. So we've got the uh, content calendar is purple. And content, remember, is not promotions. It's the article, not the ad. So I am blinking here. If I'm overheating, I might have to turn that one off and turn another camera on. I've got them set up. Actually, what I'll do is I'll turn that off and you can just see the screen clearly. I'm going to use that one. So we've got job of the week, we've got motivational Monday, and then we've got helpful tips. So how to do exams or write essays or English as a second language or whatever it is, but it's about what's in it for them, not what's in it for you. What else do we have here? We have the promotions calendar is in red. And the reason I do it in red is because I want to make sure that the whole kit and caboodle is not all red. If I look at this calendar and it's all red, or I go in and I change some of the things to the red promotions calendar because they've been misfiled, misaligned, then you know these things need to be fixed. You cannot have all the university would like to announce type stuff. You've got to have what's in it for them as well, some wins for them. So uh, 
a call to action about getting organized for something that you need them to do. You might do a journalist PR Twitter promotion to talk to journalists on Twitter. A throwback Thursday competition. Competitions are typically have an end goal. That's a what's in it for the uni or the college or the school, whatever. And so it's marking them correctly. A competition is not content, it's a promotion. You might want to put your ads in here as well so that you are highlighting how your ads are supporting your content calendar and are not a world apart. They're not an entirely different thing because it's super annoying when, you know, um, those kind of things happen. I don't believe in spending money on ads that are not supporting content and I don't believe on setting up content and spending money on resources to create content that aren't supporting the ads. Like everything has to work together. You can't have the brand saying one thing and then talking about something else on, on the other one. It doesn't really work that well. It works much better this way. So let's keep going. Um, the influencer calendar, so an influencer team meeting or brand ambassador meeting might be on Wednesdays. I also want to point out, oh, the social media manager's off-site or that the Instagram photographer's not going to be away on that, around on that day. Fan photo Friday, uh, maybe a, ask me anything or town hall or talk to the v, um, vice chancellor day. And then... Uh, hump day, getting people through the week so that you're emotionally supporting them through tough times. I include the UN Observance Days, so World Press Freedom Day, Time of Remembrance, World Mi Migratory Bird Day. I'm not sure why that would be of interest to you guys, but at least if I've got the UN Observances, it's, it's actually the UN's own calendar and I subscribe to it. So I can just see what's coming up and I can flick ahead a few weeks and just check everything out. Um, so I think if I look at this week and I turn on the, that that was a screenshot, if I turn on the UN Observances one, World Book Day, but they haven't put up um, World Hearing Day. Um, who was doing hearing again? TAFE I think it was, wasn't it? So... Yeah, okay, cool. It's up to you. You choose the right events for the right um, audiences. I also would put in New South Wales school holidays. And I also like to see... What was the other one? Some of the overseas holidays, if we're working on a student acquisition program just because of the way that some of those holidays work. And um, and also my universities publish calendars that I can click and add them in here so I can see what my department's doing and, you know, what events they've got coming up and any special training they want staff to do or whatever it is that we're being roped into. <laughs> I can see it in there, in my little magic box. Anyway, let's keep going. Don't know what happened with the camera. It's settled down again now. Turned it off for a moment. It's behaving. It's one thirty-five. If you've got any questions, please let me know. So, when you're creating your social media calendars, remember the right content to the right audience at the right time. You can't write content for alumni to 17-year-olds that you haven't acquired yet as students. And, you know, the vice chancellor shaking hands with some political figure may not be of interest to every single person on the campus. And every time people don't engage you, the algorithm comes and stabs you in the heart. I don't know what else to tell you. It's a little violent, but there you go. That's what it feels like. So if you have too much different content to too many different audiences and not necessarily at the right time, that's going to be problematic. Um, tip, if you're going to ask people well, what are they going to do on the weekend, don't do it on Monday. Ask them on Friday, that kind of thing. So 
This is an example for social media calendar. It's not. It's actually one that comes with Airtable. I'm not recommending Airtable. I'm not recommending Trello. I'm not recommending Asana. I do have the free accounts, I think, on all of them. They all look much of a muchness to me, but this is an idea that you could do. You put your content up and then you're able to set up your own Kanban. That's this format. You can set up your own fields. So you can say content type. You could say instead of accessories, you could say something like um, exam timetable or sport results or crisis comms or whatever it is you want to you want to have different content around choose the channel instagram facebook twitter linkedin whatever it is that you're thinking of using as a channel and remember you can identify certain channels for certain audiences so you might say linkedin is for our alumni it's for our peer-to-peer -peer joint venture partners the key centers and other educational bodies that work with us and we work with them it's for um, employer branding, for lecturer, you know, to hire new lecturers and that kind of thing. Post status, so you can trigger things so that if they are read, if they're marked as ready to publish, that then they publish. So you can set up automation. So it's just an idea about making sure that you're not just thinking that photo looks good, but the kind of content you want to write around it. How you, how you would classify it, what channels you wanted to go on to for which audiences and then moving it through a status. So draft, approved, um, scheduled, up and then evergreen. Evergreen is for the stuff you want to continually post, the stuff that's too good, the video promotion that you want to be seen more than once. You want it to go out regularly. So evergreen, that content. <laughs> Then we're going to come to um, Canva. Uh, no, I don't want to do that one yet. We're going to go to Canva. We're going to get onto shared content in a moment, like how to find content and share it to make sure you don't lose traction in the algorithm. There's anecdotal evidence, and you know what I think, or what I don't think of anecdotal evidence. If it's not scientific, if it's not in the data research briefings, if it's not in the patents, if it's not in the um, research papers, if it's not being ratified by the people that write the algorithms and the companies that, you know, have been acquired that, that are doing semantic um, AI and they're doing sentiment analysis and they're doing, you know, they're listing all the algorithm data sets. If it's just or oh, my best friend says sharing content doesn't work. Yes. Your best friend is not a resource. Talking of resources, I do blog these videos with links to everything that I'm showing you. So make a note of the date because I list the date in the blog so that you can, you know, it's March the 4th. It's either today or tomorrow. It will go up on my blog with all the links as resources for students and lecturers. I and social media managers and anybody else really that wants them. I have no idea. I just put it out there and let people play. So this is um, Canva. You're probably familiar with Canva. I don't know what they've done up here, but you've got templates for um, one thing we know from Facebook's newsroom is they made an announcement that images that are not the correct size will be penalized in the newsfeed. So use a templating program like Canva. I use Crello. I use both. And um, you'll be able to get the correct size and make sure you're uploading everything at the correct size and you're not being penalized because it had to go boom, 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 boom and try and find the right size for you. All right. Um, so you can choose uh, Instagram post and then mm, I want to choose the layout maybe that I've got Valentine's Day. How was your Valentine's Day? 
Did you go out and party in the middle of a pandemic? Or did you stay home and scoff cookies and chocolates? Anyway, uh, Instagram post, I don't know. Oh, I tell you what I do. I don't always use their... I, I mean, I eventually put it in their um, template so it's the correct size. But I might, for instance, take an infographic to deliver key information in a visual format. Remember visual story types, not text story types. Academic researchers are text story types, but visual story types are fairly common across the board. And so you can take an infographic, which the engineer in me would just say to you, look, it's just taking black and white dot points and numbers and then putting it into primary colors for school children. <laughs> but they work. People like infographics. So you've got all these templates on, on Canva. You can make sure you choose infographic or um, you can choose Instagram post or Facebook cover or whatever it is that you want to do. Then once you've done that, um, I'll just go to Canva. So I'll go into my designs. So if I've got this image here, which um, I can then drag on text and put some text on it. You know, would you like to go to a university that's next to a beach? You know, if you're doing that kind of what we call beauty spot, like the tree, the Harvard tree, I guess. Um, once all that's done, I'll just go back to the home again. If you go into the content planner and then you click plus and then you click the image that you've just created, you can schedule it to a variety of different platforms. So um, rather than using the other platforms where you'd have to upload the images and then upload the text and then go through and create some sort of automation, this will give you an option to post directly to your Facebook page or Twitter or Facebook group. And unlike the other systems where you click on these and then choose the date and time, Canva's a little bit round the other way. So I've finished all my images and then I have to leave there and come to the content planner. So I can't do it within the image creation. I, I can't click on the image and then say when I wanted to go out. I would have to come here and then choose the date and time, choose the image, schedule to Facebook group, and then connect my Facebook and we're good to go. I don't know. I know lots of universities like Canva. Some of you like other tools, but it's an option. It's definitely an option. We've got about six minutes, so I need to get onto other people's content because I think it is kind of critical. So I've shown you Feedly before. By the way, what did you think of Canva? Do you use it? Is it interesting to you? And no, I'm not just asking for engagement. I really want to know. Um, I disconnected from it. I had it for a number of years, an annual membership. I decided to go with Crello. And then I found Crello hard to use. And every time I clicked a link which said, you can go here to create a YouTube intro, it didn't work. <laughs> so I've gone back to Canva. And I'd like to know what you would like. And don't say Adobe. I do not use Adobe and I... We will not use Adobe. That's a story for another day. Anyway, Feedly is where we bring in the Twitter lists, for instance, the vice chancellor's list. Um, I can also bring in Google News, the Google Alerts. So rather than opening up 50 million emails every single morning from Google Alerts, I can just get me out of the way. Um, actually, it doesn't say Feedly, does it? So I can just do that. I can click on here and see what Google will bring me if I put in University Australia. So uh, what sort of things I hear? Three minutes ago, UNSW Business School. Hi, UNSW. Taught there a few times. And the University of Sydney. And the University of Adelaide. And the University.
University of Western Sydney and quite a few Singaporean universities. <laughs> I just to be clear, I don't just lecture at universities, I also consult to universities on social media. So I'm consolidating all of the things that we've gone through in the last 10 or 12 years on that. So it's overseas universities. I need to fix the search. I'm not happy with the search. I think it's a bit... I, I, University of Australia is too general. So I will uh, bring in... I will modify it. When you see something like this, it uh, like the Griffith University, blah, 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 blah. Often what happens is Google is pulling in the data directly from the university site. So if I go to Griffith University... I find their social media newsroom, which is news.griffith.edu.au. Basically, it's a social media press room and corporate blog. But blog makes it sound unimportant. But if we say social media newsroom or even just newsroom, because who cares these days if it's traditional media delivering the content or whether it's students delivering the content into their Facebook group, the news is getting out. Obviously, there's no paywalls here, so we're not going to have the issue that we had last week with monitoring of traditional media where you can bring in the headline and the thumbnail and the extract. This would be primarily most of the media. So let's have a look at this. <laughs> um, this is the Griffith, oh, Griffith University newsroom. And there's that Queensland Conservatorium story. So that's... And notice that they're marked in categories, alumni. So if we go back to our original slide, this one, was it this one? Yeah. And we talk about um, what audience needs, you know, what content and how is that content going to be structured? Think of it as if it's a website or uh, category. So we've got health. It's interesting. Digital mental health is not under health. It's under business and government. Probably need. It's probably under both, but they're only showing the first category. Um, now, what I do is I take that link and I copy it, and then I come back to Feedly, and I click plus, and I paste the link in, and I hit return. Width of news. And it'll ask me, where do you want to put it? And I say, I think I've already done it. So you'll see it's under higher ed. And now whenever Griffith News updates their news page, I can track it. Um, with Harvard, they let me choose the particular topic. So for instance, education. I'm not actually on the Harvard site, but if I was... And then I would get a separate RSS feed URL, if you like, <laughs> um, for that category. And I could just pull in the education section into my, I guess I'm creating, an. I was going to say an online newspaper. That's what I'm doing. I'm creating an online newspaper by pulling the sections of newspapers and websites and university websites and Twitter lists and Facebook groups and whatever else it is I need. Because the people that are interested in education news may not be interested in, I don't know, what, criminology and law? They should be. <laughs> um, and not everybody's interested in every piece of content on every section of the newspaper. Griffith doesn't let me do that, but that's okay. So I like Feedly for other people's content because then if I think that the article's interesting or it's about a joint venture partner or something like that, I can click on it and then I can choose to, let me get me out of the way again. Top left. I can share it to Buffer app or Hootsuite or some other tool. I can share it to Facebook, to Instagram, to Twitter. I would only use the Buffer app and the Hootsuite if I wanted to schedule it for the future. Otherwise, I would probably go directly with these. And then there, you can add other options in here, whatever other platforms. I don't know. TikTok? 
wherever you are. We are at 49 minutes and 56 seconds. Yes. So that's a 50 minute lecture right there. Normally in a live lecture, um, I ask if I need to clarify anything. We go through homework and uh, we talk about the next lecture. So I'm not going to spend 10 minutes um, faffing on that sort of stuff. I do want to point out something which is starting on, let me see where my little note thingy is, which I don't have it here. Starting on eight, the first Monday in April. Hmm, no, it's not there. First Monday in April, I am doing, I'm getting together a small tutorial group. The first Monday in April is a, a lecture on social media audits. It's a private lecture online. You join up. I haven't got a link for you at the moment. Not that invested in promoting it, really. I'll, I'll fill up the seats quite quickly. I will definitely mention it on Monday's news, and I'll give you the link then. The second, sorry, the third Monday in the month. So the first Monday is the lecture. The third Monday is the tutorial. And in between that, there is homework. So I give you structured homework to do and there's all these kind of like learning outcomes and stuff at, attached to it that these lectures kind of like me fitting in stuff in 50 minutes is a bit different the other ones are you watch the lecture you do the homework and then in the tutorial we get together we do group work we work through issues and questions and answers I clarify all the places that I stuffed up because I didn't explain it properly you explain to me where you stuffed up and didn't understand it and um, we commiserate and we get things done and the lectures are available for a month. And then April is audits, how to do a social media audit, your own audit, frenemies audit, audits, competitor audits. It's not specifically for universities. Um, you can come in from whatever industry you're coming in from. Or government. I have a lot of people in government that come. The next month after that, you know what? I'm getting into it. I haven't even launched the URL yet. I'm pretty sure it's going to be training.laurelpapworth.com slash mentoring, but I'm almost certain there's nothing on that page at the moment. So don't get too excited by what you see on there because it's me faffing. And I've got the whole program put together up until January. So you can come in for one month, you can sign up for the year, you can do whatever you want to do. As we come into the last couple of minutes, I do just want to put a caveat on it. I really want people who are outcome focused and who are committed. This isn't passive watching of me delivering broadcast material to you. Okay, the lecture is. <laughs> the lecture is. The tutorial, if I'm the only one talking in the tutorial, I will can it very quickly. This is not something that I'm interested in doing in. I have a lot of that already in my life of me delivering lots of content to um, a group of people who just want to know what they what is the minimum they need to know to pass the exam. That is not what this is about. This is about investing your time with me to learn, grow and change your social media from whatever area you're coming from. So I didn't mean for that to turn into a promotion, but never mind. <laughs> um, I'll talk about it more on Monday's social media news lecture, which is on at 10.45 in the morning. The tutorial group is online and the homework and everything's online and the videos are available for a month and then the next month's one kicks in. If you're interested, I don't know, let me know if you'd like to be put on the list. Um, what else do we get doing? So next Thursday we're staying with universities social media and universities and i'm doing analytics so we're going to look at the analytic i need to write it down because otherwise i'm hunting through the video during the week trying to remember what i promised even though i've got them all written down somewhere but we're doing thursday in this free lecture series is social media analytics analytics insights measurement 
benchmarks tools for universities, colleges and higher education. If you have any questions, let me know before Thursday so I can actually be prepared and well, I can usually answer them anyway. It's not like I haven't taught these for 50 million years. Um, what else? Um, I think that's about all. What did you think? Let me know. Was it helpful? Did you know all this stuff? Does your university already do all this? And hopefully this has gone out live. Mondays didn't go to LinkedIn. So I did check did check by doing a video to all the platforms just before and it looked like it worked so I hope you have enjoyed this and um, yeah I'll see you on Monday for the news or Thursday for the university lecture and in the meantime have a wonderful rest of the week and weekend won't you.